Thomas Perkins here, Fish Crew Aquatics. Today I want to talk about this tank. This 20 long contains my breeding colony of panicories and a breeding group of black clad minnows. Um, it also contains all of my, uh, a lot of my java moss that I've been propagating, a lot of my uh, valve that I've been propagating, and a bunch of red ramshorn snails. So, um, start with the the reason why I said the tank, the pandacories. I wanted to breed these guys. And uh, this is green water. This is probably the best thing that could happen to a fish tank you're trying to breed fish in. Because this is just free food. <laughs> it's, it's all it is. It's fantastic. Every time the fish breathes in, it gets food. It's, it's great. Helps really put some size on them. Uh, it's just a free-floating algae. Um, you have to keep an eye on it. Uh, I do 50% water change in this tank every week, um, and I did one yesterday, it's the only reason we can see through it, through it right now. And of course I could run to the back whenever I start filming, but whatever. Um, anyway, the panda quarries, I started with seven, uh, it took me about a year to get them up to the right age to breed, and then now they are, I wound up with one male and four females out of the group of seven. Uh, they're, they don't, they had to do some adjusting to the water parameters here. Uh, this next generation will be fully, uh, raised in this lovely milk we call Oklahoma tap water. Um, but, I sounded way country than I meant it to. <laughs> um, but, uh, my Mississippi popped out for a second. <laughs> Yeah, the, uh, the pandas are the main reason why I set up this tank. Uh, everything else is just kind of secondary. The, what they do is, the female will lead the male around, and then she'll push her way through this moss in here. And that will, uh, she'll deposit the eggs that way, and then the male will follow behind and fertilize them. Or... I think they carry it, and they fertilize it while they're carrying it, and then she drops it somewhere where he can't see it. Anyway, um... But the, uh... The babies are down here. There's one right there in the middle of the screen. There he goes. Now, as you can see, I have the adults and the babies in the same tank, and if I had more room, I would definitely split them up, um, because... That will eat their own babies. Uh, but what I did was, whenever I first set it up, I took some green tomato cages like this. You get these from Cherry Tomatoes. Um, I used to work in the food industry, so I got a bunch of them. I stack them three high to make holes about that big. There's plenty of room on top for food to fall through. And then I put a ball of moss in here. And uh, basically just let the... Uh, the fry I had these. One in this corner, one in the middle, and one in the back. Uh, and that really upped my yield. But they just stayed in there until the fry were mm, about an eighth of an inch long, too big to fit in the adult's mouth. Which they still hide from them. Uh, and they'll continue just sitting here and grow. Uh, they get a little few protein treats. Um, I'm trying to cull out the uh, brown gene for these, uh, these snails. I just take the uh, snail, push it against the glass, and I'll well, show this to you. But... Instant food. Okay. Uh, and that basically works how natural. That's how natural selection works, guys. I'm selecting for a gene. So, um, as you see, I got these beautiful red ram's horns, and they are uh, fantastic fish. There's a little bit of coral chips in here, but not a lot. Um, But, um, yeah. Oh, let's talk about the uh, white clouds. I needed something in here as a desert fish to, uh, that can take the temperature swings that you have to do with quarries. Oh, what I do is, this tank heats up to about middle 70s, uh, and then I do a big water change. Like, 50% water change, and it's cold. I mean, cold water, fresh out of the tap. Um, cold water, which is around 65. So you have 70, 
5 degree water in here and it drops to 65, balances out about 70 degrees. And that temperature swing triggers the breed. <coughs> Sorry. That temperature swing is what triggers them to breed. Now, uh, it would have been a lot easier if I had like an RO system set up in here, but I don't have that. I just have a bucket. Literally, I have a big bucket sitting right there. So, anyway. Um, the. But that tells the females that it's raining, uh, basically. That's sort of time water changes when it's storming outside, though the barometric pressure drops as well. Um, and that helps the. Uh, that helps them think that it's, for, it's actually a baby and a mama sitting right there together. It's kind of cute. Yeah. But uh, yeah, they uh, they breed whenever it rains uh, in the wild. They take a massive temperature swing. I needed was a fish that could survive that. Um, I have other fish in the tank in, in the room that uses the other fish. I use uh, diamond tetras up top in the geo tank. See a few of them there. And then I've got. Uh, actual guppies in this tank. Uh, so, you can see my Julia Aquarius. They haven't bred yet for me. I'm still working on them. These guys are doing fine. They are actually another spawn in the mop right now. In the uh, moss right now. So, we'll just have to wait and see if those hatch out. Uh, but I've had pretty good luck hatching them out so far. Um, my estimate is there's about 25 babies in here. Which means I have plenty to get my school back up, and I need to get the, uh, I'm going to keep, uh, ten of them. The rest I'm going to sell at the, uh, I'm going to take up to the, uh, Aquarium Club in Springdale, so. Closest club to me. It's, like, still 80 miles, but still, I don't care. Um, but yeah, here we go. Uh, I've got some really nice moss in here. Uh, there's some white clouds right there. Uh, they've been breeding for me, which I was not expecting. Uh, I figured the eggs would be eaten by the quarries, but there's enough cover in here that they, they're surviving. Um, the little fry. got two fry so far. As far as I can tell. I can't see the back of the tank, but, you know, whatever. Um, they're doing fine. Do their thing. Um... Yeah. The white cloud binners are from uh, southern China, and they take a massive sweat temperature swing. They go down to 45 degrees if, you, if need be. Um, so that's a fun fish to add into this tank. But it helps. The other fish are in the tank because these are bottom dwelling fish, and their eyes are situated on top of their head to look for predators. Um, any kind of. Now there's a fish above them, like a little fish like that. Just lets them know that there's nothing dangerous around and. Helps calm them down. Uh, just anything mindless to keep their keep them busy. But you know, they do fine. Um, in this take, they're actually breeding for me, which is nice. I haven't seen the fry yet. Usually he comes down here and tries to pick off some of his uh, food. But yeah, you know, my estimates about 25 baby quarries. There's two additional white clad minnows. Um, I do need to go get a unrelated male to add to this tank a little later. Um, I like how they get a little darker as they get older. Uh, this is a pretty light tank, but they're, they're actually a little bit darker than they were when I first got them. They were stark white when I first got them. Um, I think the uh, my Facebook profile page is a, it's a group of panicories after I got them. But um, they're doing fantastic in here. I love this tank. There is, uh, the plants in here are Valsinaria, Giava Moss, uh, Guppy Grass, Rotala, Water Lotus, and a mess of duckweed. Honestly, there's a lot of plants in this tank. <laughs> but, um, it's absorbing a lot of nitrogen for me. It actually helps keep the water cleaner than it should be, um, with this many fish. So, I'm not gonna knock it. I had to get the duckweed cleared out so I can to grow plants in the bottom, so. Uh, substrate. There is a small patch of dirt right here. Um, this, uh, planet tank substrate that I got, uh, is, it's okay. Um, it wasn't a mound in the back, but they pushed it all forward. And the front quarter of the tank is all sand. It was all sand. But, uh, they've, they've redecorated a little bit. 
is a big female. If you don't have sex with Cory, um, an adult Cory, the females are bigger and broader. Uh, the males are a little skinnier. Um, and you can tell when they're about to drop eggs because they get fat. Uh, they get fat with eggs. Um, and it's kind of... Uh, they don't breed as heavily as something like an Aeneas or a... Uh, like that. They drop about 10 eggs each. Which is four females to a male. Uh, that's 40 eggs for me on average. Um, the average breeding. Uh... I'm only getting about 50% survival off of these guys, so it's not super great, but, you know, better than nothing. I could get more if I pulled them and, uh, made sure. Right now it's just the cautious ones that live. Which is natural. That's actually better rates than they get in the wild, so, anyway. Um, <laughs> but I just gave them a little bit of protein snack. I want to show you guys. That looks kind of bad. Um... They eat the snails that I don't want to breeding. And that encourages the genes to be red. Yeah. I love these little white clouds. They're very pretty. There's the baby. Okay, I saw him. Yeah, he's right there. Anyway, guys. I am rambling. Y'all have a great day. Thanks for looking at something beautiful. And I will talk to you later. Maybe you guys want a shot at the adults. Alright. Bye, guys.